Hi, it's Sandra here from Create in Spain and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about freehand drawing and tracing in Scal 4. Um, what can I say about freehand drawing in Scal? Freehand drawing in Scal to me is not intuitive. It is very difficult to do really, really well. And in general, I prefer to avoid it like the plague. It's not the fault of Scal. It's simply the fault of the fact that when I'm drawing, and as someone who does drawing and painting and sketching things naturally, I like to be able to put my pen to paper or alternatives. Um, and I don't find drawing with a cursor or a mouse or something like that very intuitive at all. I find it really hard to do and it takes me far longer than it would by any other means. So whereas I love Skull for doing geometric type things and manipulating whatever images I care to manipulate, not for freehand drawing. Sorry, it's, it's not really for me. So what do I do instead? Well, there are several alternatives. Obviously the old fashioned one is to draw something and to scan it in and get your image that way. But I happen to be the owner of an iPad mini and I'm addicted to iPad apps uh, that are graphics related. I have quite a selection of them. <laughs> um, most of them, I hasten to add, are not very expensive. Uh, some of them are even free. And I'm going to list a few, but I can't honestly remember the prices and things for them. So if you want to find out if they're free or not, just go have a look on the iTunes uh, store and just plug the name in and you'll soon find out. And I'm going to tell you now that I have recently been given, for a birthday present from my younger son, I've been given a bamboo stylus. Now, I did choose the one that I wanted, and it is a bamboo fine point. I did not go for uh, one of the other models. I went for the fine point simply because, to me, it is the most like an actual pen. It's got a pretty fine nib. It's somewhere between one and two mil. So, although I've had a cheapy uh, rubber tip stylus for quite some time, it's not very easy to draw accurately with one of those. And this is a lot easier to draw with. And so I've also gone through my apps and I've marked out which ones are compatible with my stylus. And probably most styluses that you're going to get, to be honest, if they're capacitive styluses, and which ones are not. Now, one of my favorite iPad apps up to date has been InkPad. It is free, but it doesn't have a uh, pen ability, a uh, stylus ability that is. So although you can use it with your pen, if you have one, your stylus, it's not going to give you pressure sensitivity and it's, uh, it works but it doesn't work absolutely brilliantly. Um, it's a thing with iPads and stylus, they weren't designed originally to have styluses. The original thinking was that you know you can throw away your pens and your styluses and you don't need them but for artists that's never really worked which is why a lot of people are now gone back to stylus um, so ink pad doesn't have a capacitive stylus capability but it's a very good drawing app and if you don't have a stylus or if you've got one of the cheapy ones that just basically acts like your finger without putting your finger on the screen and leaving smudge marks then you will probably be quite happy using that. My Brushes Pro, this is a completely different type of thing and it gives you brush marks. And it is sensitive for a stylus and you can set your stylus to whichever one it happens to be that you're using on there. And it is a very good app and it is very useful. Touch Image Manipulator. This one is not capacitive stylus compatible, unfortunately. And I don't know if the people that make it are still doing any work on this app. The last update I could find was for 2014, 
So maybe they're letting this app go, I don't know. Okay, sketches. There are two forms of the sketches app. One is normal sketches and the other one is the pro version. I have the pro version and that one is stylus compatible. Now, from what I remember, because I already had the app, I don't remember having to pay to get the pro version. I think it was one of those things like, oh, this version is free this week, and that's when I got it. Very good app. I like it a lot, and it's nice and easy to use. Uh, bamboo paper. Yes, that one is stylus capacitive because it is produced by Wacom, Wacom. Uh, who produced the bamboo stylus, so that's pretty obvious. And again, it's a great app. There is also another app called Paper by a company called 53, or else the app is called 53 by Paper. I have never quite worked out which it is. And that one also is stylus capable. There is also a new app out, a relatively new app, I believe, and it is called Concepts, and this one is stylus compatible and saves to SVG, amongst other things, if you buy the Pro version. The Pro version on that one is $5.99. Now, I've been playing with it for the last couple of days, and it is so different in the way that it works from every other drawing app that I have got that I have found it very difficult to come to terms with. The saving to SVG, in my way of thinking, for what cutters want to do, is probably not worth the bother. But in order to use the app properly at all, you would need to get the paid version. If you don't have the paid version, there is so little of it that is usable, then, yeah, you might as well forget it. If you want to try it and risk your 5 99 fine. Uh, have a look at it on the store, have a look at the way that it works, try and find the videos and have a look at those. Um, personally, I think it's probably better suited to those who are more into draftsmanship, perhaps, uh, architecture things, those sorts of things. It does have a very nice measuring tool that measures lines as you actually draw them. And it's got some very, very good, cool, interactive guides and rulers. And you can do measured angles and things like that. But no, for my purpose, I really don't care for it a great deal. I'm sad about that, but, you know, what the heck. Okay, so that's my two penny worth on those. Now, you can see my screen at the moment has got skull open. And I have an image to trace. This image was drawn in Sketches Pro. And I'm showing you this because what I want to do is show you that you don't have to draw supremely accurately on your iPad in order to get a really good result at the end of the day in Scar. Okay? I have purposely drawn these items so that they are separate, individual items and not try to draw the complete branch with the leaves and the flowers and all the rest of it all in one go because that's a waste of time. You can do that easily once you've got the items traced. So to choose my image I went to my desktop and I picked the one that I wanted. Cancel that out. Now, regarding tracing it, I've got it set to single colour because the image that I have is pretty much black and white. And if I set it to black there, I'm not getting all of my image. But if I move the sensitivity up, I think that's pretty much everything I've got. Update the preview. Yeah, OK, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, you can play around with it. As it happens, when I drew it, I forgot to make sure that I drew everything in black. But that is definitely the easiest way of tracing it. Once you've done it, you can put whatever colours you want in it. But if you just do it in black and trace it, not a problem. And I just want blackout selected if there are any little bits inside those. I don't want them. And I'm just going to click OK. And you can see I've got my images up. 
And if I take the colour out of that, you can see that I have perfectly clean images. Pretty nice. Now what I am going to do on this is go to, sorry, I need to break this apart, so breaking it apart. Right, what I'm going to do is select that and I'm going to go to path and simplify. And I'll probably do this a couple of times. I've got 646 nodes there and that takes it down to 383. That sounds a bit better to me. Okay, and I'm going to select it again. And I'm going to go to path and I'm going to go to simplify. And okay, it's taken down to 368. That's probably about as low as I'm going to go. But it makes it a lot better and a lot quicker when you're manipulating your images just to get the simplification of the path done to start off with. Okay, so I'm going to take this little lot here and I'm just going to move them over to one side. And I'm going to take these bits here and move them over to one side. And I know that this image is way too big, but I am not going to resize it because all I need this to do is to be scaled so that it looks correct on what I'm going to put it on. So for example, if I put a leaf here, does that look as if it's the right size for that one? Mm, no, probably not. But what I'm going to do first is go to my object and go to duplicate rotated. And I'm just going to go for, there we go, seven of them. Now, I'm not going to use it like that, I'm just going to pull them out. But what it's done is it has given me leaves that go in different directions so that they're not all pointing the same way. Of course, I'm going to have to move them regardless, and I may as well do it like that. And this makes it so much easier to get the kind of result that I want to get. Uh, actually, I think I want this one here. Maybe put that one over there. And maybe I'll put him there. No, I don't think so. Where am I going to put it? No, I think I'm going to have to rotate that one to be in a different direction, I think. And I'm going to put it on this one, I think. Oops, take this one out of the way. So I've got some leaves, and I've got another leaf shape here. I'm not striving for realism here, so don't uh, don't say you won't get two different sorts of leaves on whatever. I'm not striving for realism, and I'm just going to do the same sort of thing with this one, but I'm just going to duplicate this one in a line. There we go. And... I can resize it. Now don't forget that you can either keep your proportions or not keep your proportions and that is set in your preferences as well so if it's causing you a lot of aggravation check the preferences and see what you need to do with that. Uh, I'm going to put one here I think. Yeah I think that will do nicely for that. And uh, my flowers. Okay way way too big so I'm going to resize that and I'm going to put a flower down here I think and you notice I've drawn some individual stalks so I can put my flower on a stalk rather than having it hanging in midair it's always oops it's always a good idea and I'm going to put another one, I think, up here. But I'm going to do that flower. Make it a lot smaller. And I'm going to... Well, let me see. Copy it. Paste it in place and move it over a bit. There we go. Move it down. And copy and paste again. I'm just going to move that one there. There we go. And I'm going to move that flower, I think, down there. Okay. Now, this isn't necessarily the result that I would go for if I was actually doing it properly. 
but you get the general gist. And the nice thing is that if you're drawing on your iPad, you don't have to be really sniffy or accurate about these flowers or the leaves and things. And I will do a blog to go with this, which will show you photographs from my iPad or screenshots or something from my iPad as to how I actually drew this in the app in the first place. It's rather difficult doing both of that at the same time. Anyway, so I'm going to select all that lot, go up to Path and go to Union. And it's going to fill that in nicely. And I'm going to go to take it, whoops, I'm going to take it all again. Select Tool, it's always handy to have the right tool. I'm uh, going to go to Path Simplify just to check to see if there's anything else that I can simplify. Okay, 805 down to 390. Yeah, I'll take that. And there we go. So I've got that done. And if I now go to that and put the colour in, you can see what it looks like. And that's not half bad. I think that's quite pretty. Now, I've done it that size because the size I actually want this is sort of like this probably, maybe even smaller, but can you imagine trying to cope with doing these little things? No, I can't imagine it either. But because you have a vector drawing program and a vector image manipulation, you can resize it to whatever size you want within reason and ability of your cutting machine. So there we go, that's how to use an iPad to create a really nice design that was minutes really in the making and it looks like you have really good design ability. But you don't have to, you really don't, honest. Okay, thanks for watching. Go have a look at the blog when I post that. It may not be up at the same time as the video, but I'll give you some more information on how to get the original bits here. Okay, thanks for watching, take care, bye bye.